Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam and I'm an expert mortgage broker. And today I'm gonna to talk you through exactly how we make a mortgage application, all the things we need, when we need them, and exactly what's involved. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, please do give us a like and subscribe to the channel because there's loads of content coming. We do videos quite regularly, so uh, there'll be something of interest in there for everyone. What we need to do first is book ourselves an appointment. Now with us, you can do this online. I'll put a link in below if anyone's interested. Uh, I'm gonna talk about our process and what we do. It's gonna be the same for most mortgage brokers or probably even if you do things direct with your lender. So once we've got an appointment, what we're gonna do is have a proper chat with you. And we normally do about a 30 minute initial appointment we're gonna go through uh, what we call a fact find. So we're gonna gather loads of information. Uh, we're gonna talk about you know, who you are, what you do, you know, where you live, uh, what you earn, what your plans are. We're gonna to gather together all the information about who you are and what we're going to achieve. Uh, and we'll use that to make our recommendation later on. Once we've got all of your information, what we're gonna do is a little bit of research. We're gonna find out what's best for you. Now to do this, we're probably gonna need some documents from you. We're gonna need some bits and bobs that uh, you'll be able to send over to us. Um, so let's start with the basics. So we're gonna need your pay slips, assuming you're employed. If you're employed, we're gonna need your pay slips last three months worth and we're going to need the last three months bank statements as well. Now if you're self-employed, don't panic, uh, there's slightly different things uh, that we need. We're going to need uh, SA 302s or tax calculations and tax year overviews, but we'll do another video about that another day, um, particularly on self-employed because it's a whole subject that we can talk about. Uh, but apart from the income proofs, everything else remains the same. So if you're self-employed, stay tuned, don't worry, it's all the same. Then we're going to need to know that you are who you say you are and you live where you say you, you live. So we are going to need some proof of ID and some proof of address for you. Now they're the basics that we need all the time. We might also need proof of deposit if you're buying a house, not if you're remortgaging though, that's different. You already, already live there, so there's your deposit. Okay, so once we've got all of your documents, we're gonna go off and we're gonna do some research and we're gonna decide which lender is gonna be best for you. And that is gonna take into account the lender's criteria. So all lenders will do different things. Some are more generous than others. Some will look at income differently. Uh, some are more generous if you've got overtime and bonus and things. Some are better if you're self-employed or employed. So there's lots of different lenders that we're gonna consider. And we're also gonna look at how much you can borrow uh, and your, your affordability. And so once we've done those things, we'll be able to report back to you with how much you can borrow, how much that's gonna cost, uh, what sort of lenders we're gonna go to, and then that will give you either your, your maximum purchase price if you're buying, or if you're remortgaging, it will let you know how much you could borrow. Um, and we're also gonna factor in how much deposit you've got as well for that. So the more deposit you've got, sometimes the more generous lenders can be, but as long as you've got sort of 15% deposit, it doesn't really matter beyond that. 10 and 5% deposit is perfectly doable as well, but some lenders might just reduce the amount they'll lend a little bit. So we need to go to the right lender for your circumstances. That's really, really important. And the important message there is if you're not using a broker, it's really quite hard to know which lenders are gonna be most generous. You know, we, we know because we do it all the time. If you're going it alone, there are some lenders that you're gonna to wanna to go to and some that you're not. Once we've decided which lender we're gonna to go to, uh, we're gonna talk you through our next steps and that's usually gonna be an agreement in principle. So the agreement in principle, if you're out viewing properties, uh, agents are gonna be asking you for your agreement in principle, mortgage in principle sometimes. And that is basically a credit score, really. Now, in the olden days, uh, I say olden days, you know, five, 10 years ago, uh, an agreement in principle was quite an important thing. It meant that you could show that you could you know, borrow the money that you wanted for your house. Nowadays, you can get your own online and you can put in completely the wrong information and you'll come out with a, an agreement in principle. So estate agents are a little bit more kind of accepting uh, nowadays that you know, we can let them know that you're good to go. Estate agents will always prefer you to use a broker. 
uh, rather than doing it yourself because it is so easy to get it wrong. It's not to say you have to, you absolutely don't have to, uh, but it is easy to get wrong uh, on, your, on your own because lenders take different, different income into account and different things as we've just said. So. We're going to do the agreement in principle, and that's basically a credit check to let us know that your credit is fine. Uh, affordability uh, is in there as well, but we'll have already checked that because there's affordability calculators that each lender has, so we can check that without affecting your, your credit score. Some agreement in principles uh, will leave what we call a soft footprint, which means that only you'll be able to see from your credit score that one has been done. No one else will, so it won't affect your credit score. Some lenders, though, still leave a footprint on your credit score, which if you do lots and lots of them, lots of searches, that can start bringing your credit score down a little bit, which isn't ideal. So we, need, we only ever really do one, um, and, and there's no need for any more than that, really. Then, once we've got your agreement in principle, and you're happy with what uh, we're suggesting, and either you've found a property or you're ready to go on your, on your remortgage, we're going to do the application. So we're gonna submit the application form, and that is a traditional form. Uh, it's online usually uh, these days, unless we go into a really specialist lender, but it's usually online. So we will fill in that form for you, we'll put in all your details, who you are, what you do, where you live, how much we want to borrow, uh, it needs all the information about your solicitors and your whole circumstance. That is the information that then gets passed to the lender for them to decide if they're going to give us the money. Now, as long as we've already checked how much you can borrow, we've already got your credit score, there shouldn't really be anything to go wrong from this point. That's not to say it always goes like that. Sometimes things crop up that people aren't aware of, and sometimes things can go a little bit wrong. Um, but we try and keep that to a minimum. It doesn't happen very often, and there's usually a backup plan there anyway. So let's not get too hung up on that right now. So application goes into the mortgage lender, and they're gonna take some time processing it. So they're gonna look at the application. They're gonna look at all the, all the documents that we've sent in, you know, your pay slips, your bank statements, and those sorts of things. And they're gonna assess whether what we've put on the application is actually correct and matches what's on your bank statements and your pay slips. Now, if you use a broker, should be reassured that that will that will match and then after a little while of processing uh, the lender will agree the mortgage application now it's perfectly normal for the lender to come back with some more questions once everything's been sent in so the lender will look at everything and then if they've got anything that they need to know they'll go to you or they'll go to your broker if you've used one uh, and ask anything else that they need now, some lenders will just pick up the phone some lenders will send an email but either way they're going to come back to us uh, if they've got any other questions and that's perfectly normal so we answer those we give them any other documents and things that they need um, now we as brokers try and kind of shelter you from from this process you know you don't need to worry about the back and forth between the lenders that, that's our job um, so sometimes it can seem like it's you know it's taking a little while but you know hopefully your broker will, will keep in touch and, and let you know what's happening but not worry you with you know the whys and the wherefores of all the questions that are being asked oh it's probably worth saying as well that the lender will want to value the property they want to do evaluation to make sure that the property either that you live in or that you're buying is worth what we've said it's worth and so they'll they'll use their own surveyor to do that um, uh, alongside the other information that we've given. So then once the lender is happy with everything, we will get what we call a mortgage offer. And that mortgage offer is basically the lender saying, yes, we will give you the money uh, that you wanted to borrow on that property. And that mortgage offer will usually last between three and six months, um, depending on the lender and depending on what you're doing as well, whether you're buying or remortgaging. And then we will get a copy of that you will get a copy of that and your solicitor will get a copy of that as well and once your solicitor's got their copy there will be some extra work that your solicitor needs to do for the mortgage lender now if you're buying a property that would already already be factored into your solicitor's costs there won't be any extra to pay if you're remortgaging normally that that solicitor work is, is, is free, it doesn't cost you anything. Normally the lender will cover the cost of that solicitor, either by way of a free solicitor or a cash back to cover a solicitor. Either way, uh, it, it's fine and it doesn't usually cost you anything if it's a normal residential mortgage. Um, 
as a side note, I guess, if you're, you're adding someone on or taking someone off or making any complicated changes, there might be a small legal fee payable, but, uh, but, but not much. Generally, let's assume that the legal process is free if you're remortgaging. So, lender's happy, solicitors have got their copy, they're happy, you're happy, we're happy. All that's left to do now is for the solicitors to finish their, their bits and bobs, their questions and things, particularly if you're buying, and then we'll set a completion date. Now, if you're buying a house, you'll exchange contracts, that's when everything's legally bound. We'll, we'll talk about the buying process another day, but uh, you'll exchange contracts and then a completion date will be set. That's the day on which the mortgage lender will release the money. They'll send it to the solicitor, never you. Uh, you won't get the money from the lender. That will go, always go to the solicitor. And the solicitor will either pay off the old mortgage or they'll complete your house purchase, whatever, whatever we're doing. Um, and that's it. The mortgage is completed. Now, depending on the lender, you might make a payment fairly soon or it might be the following month when you make a payment. Some lenders that will include some interest uh, from the month where you've completed, some lenders it won't. If you're swapping from one lender to the next, sometimes there's a bit of, con not confusion, but sometimes there's a bit of overlap between payments, but you'll always get it back. You'll never be paying two lenders at the same time. One will stop and the other will start. So uh, that process is handled by us and by, by the solicitors. Uh, and there you have it. So you're left with a new mortgage or your first mortgage maybe uh, completed on the house. All you've got to do now is pay it off. So that's a whole nother subject for another day, but uh, you make your monthly payments and there you go. So I hope you found that useful. That is our mortgage application process. So if you have any questions on that, please feel free to comment below or you can get in touch through our website if you want to uh, and I will look forward to seeing you on the next video really soon. Take care.